10 o'clock on Wednesday morning, um, January 20, 2021. And this day, not just for us. Anyway, call to order. The first order of business is that uh, uh, I guess Jennifer needs to call the roll. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And just to let the board know, we are recording now. Good. Okay. Oh. Chair Gushal. Here. Mr. Deke. Present. Mr. Stewart. Here. Ms. Peace. Here. Thank you. You have a quorum, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chair, this is uh, Bob Stewart. Can you turn your uh, your volume up a little bit on your speaker? I can hear everybody else is coming through loud and clear, but you're you're uh, very light. Okay. Hard to hear. Let's see if I can do that. I am jacking it up. Is this better? No. Better. Better. Yes. No, better. Is it sufficient? Close A enough. little bit more. <laughs> Hello, Nancy. How are you? Hi, Nancy. <laughs> Let's say, let me see here. Here is another. Oh, I don't want to turn it to mute. I, I, this is about all I can do. I'm sorry to say. Okay, I can hear you okay now. It's, can everybody it's fine. Hear me? Yes. All right, apparently everybody is nodding. All right, so um, the first item of business for us is to look at the agenda for today's meeting. And um, I'm wondering. We all have had a chance to look at it. It was sent to us electronically earlier. Any questions regarding the agenda for today's meeting is shown on the uh, on the meeting agenda for today. While we were okay. Mr. Chair, I do have one question for you. Um, I'm sorry, I don't have the agenda in front of me. I apologize for that. Um, I believe that we have a couple of members that need to be sworn in. And I I don't know if that's on the agenda, but um, we should probably do that before you do any other business. I think that's a good idea. It is not on, on the agenda. So would you refresh our memories, uh, Ms. Jones, as to who needs to be sworn in. Um, Mr. Chair, uh, Nancy Peace needs to be sworn in. This is her first uh, meeting after being appointed to the board. And you also need to be um, sworn in after your reappointment. So um, whenever you're ready, we'll do a, a joint swearing in. Uh, Ms. Peace, are you ready? Yes. All right, and I'm ready. And Ms. Jones, would you please administer the oath? Yes, Mr. Chair. So um, again, I will tell you, this is one of my favorite duties as chair. And I'm gonna ask Ms. Peace and Mr. Guchow to raise your right hands. And I will say the oath and you will repeat after me when I say, um, uh, but we should be good, so we're ready. Um, I solemnly swear or affirm. I solemnly swear or affirm. Swear or affirm. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. That I will support, support and defend the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the State of Alaska. The Constitution of the State of Alaska and the Charter of the Municipality of Anchorage. And the Charter of the Municipality of Anchorage. And the Charter of the Municipality of Anchorage. And that I will faithfully perform. And that I will faithfully perform. And that I will faithfully perform. The duties of Board of Adjustment Member. The duties of Board of Adjustment Member. The duties of Board of Adjustment Members. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for reminding 
briefing us, I uh, knew there was uh, a reappointment for me on the way. I didn't know that it had already occurred. Anyway, um, let us get back to the approval of the agenda. Basically, we scheduled a meeting today. And uh, so there are two items that we really need to decide. First of all, who's going to be on the panel? And secondly, uh, when should we have the, or when should we consider the appeal, the substance of the appeal? Um, before we get there, however, minutes of the previous meeting. Mr. Chair. Yes. Um, I think uh, it may be a distance from the microphone where where we have the have the sound issues. Uh, you 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 come cutting in and out a bit. So you may have to uh, scoot a little bit. Um, I'm not problem solving for you, but it seems like that may be the thing. Well, I'm uh, I'm very sorry about that. Let me uh, go to the top of the of the screen here. No, it says mute. I don't want it to mute. That no, no, was... you're good. I think it was just too far away, perhaps. Okay. You were too far away. I'm OK now. You better. Good. All right, so let's get back to the agenda. Um, have you all had a chance to review the agenda? Any objection to the agenda? Any objection? Any objection? No. Seeing, seeing none, the agenda at least is approved. So we then go um, to the minutes of the last meeting, which lo and behold was on November 8, 2018. Um, have we all had a chance to review those minutes? Um, I gather was present with myself, Tomas, and Bob Stewart. He was not there. So, um, of the two of us who were present at that meeting, do you have any objections to the minutes? Uh, Baron, on the uh... Could could somebody take a look at that date that is uh, where Tomas moved? It's 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 got uh, zero five slash zero eight zero twenty eighteen. I'm not sure. What page are you on of the uh, previous minute? Yeah, what it's page? it's on page one. It's it's four A. Okay. So you are referring to a previous meeting. Those are apparently the minutes of a previous meeting of May 9, 2018. Is that correct? Minutes of the meeting of May 9. Yes. And it I can't verify that particular uh date but i i did go through and review everything else and it looked like it was okay but i i've got it i'm not sure i can verify that uh, date that's printed there is there an extra zero in there i mean as opposed to may 9 you mean no what are you talking yeah It's uh, it's 4A, minutes of the Board of Adjustment meeting of May 9, 2018. Thomas Deke moved to amend the meeting, uh, the minutes of the Board of Adjustment meeting on May 9th. Yes. Uh, and then as follows, Chair Guchow will draft an order directing the appellant to correct the appellant brief filed. And then it's got 5 slash 080-2018. Now I see what you're talking about. That it, it, five, there's some five o oh, eight. There should be a space in there. Is that what you're talking about? It looks like there might be an extra zero in there. Yes, I think that zero should be deleted. Would that satisfy your concern? I believe it will. Yes. Okay. All right. So, um, subject, any further objection to 
the approval of the minutes of this board of November 8, 2018. Other than what Mr. Stewart referred to. Hearing Mr. None. Chair, I'm good with the extra zero removed. Uh, so, um, I, yes. no objection. Okay. Um, Mr. Stewart, any further objection? No. I, I, I I'm good no, with it. I have no objection either. So, subject to the deletion of the zero in paragraph 4A of the minutes of November 8, 2018, those minutes are approved. Thank you, Mr. Stewart. You can always be relied upon to bring to our attention certain things that many of us overlook. <laughs> All right. Uh, old business, there's no old business um, that I'm aware of. Is anybody else aware of the old business that we need to attend to? Apparently not. We then move to new business. And that is filling hearing of the uh, 2020-4 State Planning and Zoning Commission Provisional Number 2020-097 of the multifamily residential development in Uruguay. Um, the first thing we need to consider is uh, are there any disclosures of potential of interest. Ms. Pease. I have no no disclosures of potential conflict of interest, no. Okay. Mr. Stewart. I have no potential conflict of interest. Mr. Deek. Uh, no, com no potential conflict of interest on my part either. Thank you. And I have, I myself, have no potential conflict of interest in this case either. All right. So then the first thing to consider is um, what we usually do is we have a panel of three members and there are four of us. So one of us needs to so to speak drop out from the consideration of this case. And I'm wondering, well, Mr. Deke, were you about to say something? I think it was Robert, but I was too. So let, let's just Robert start. Okay, Mr. Uh, Stewart. Yeah, uh, Mr. Chair, I was wondering, uh, would it be okay since um, we've got one new member to uh, to run all four of us? Um, I know it makes an even number. Uh, Barbara, do you, Ms. Jones, do you happen to have... Um, or Dennis, Mr. Wheeler, any thoughts on that? Mr. Chairman, I'm going to have to. I'm going to have to look. Um, I don't know off the top of my head if there's a limitation on whether the board can can do it in full or whether it has to be a three member uh, panel only. And uh, obviously, there is that concern about whether or not it would trigger a tie. Um, you know, typically, if there's a tie, there's a there's a a rule in place that says what happens in terms of the decision, right? So the, the appeal is the, the appeal fails or or doesn't fail depending on on the tie. I'll have to read up on that. Um, but it's going to take me a little bit to, to find that code section. All right, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chair, Chair. Mr. Jones. Oh, sorry. Uh, the other option that you could do is you could have one person serve as an alternate, depending on what um, Mr. Wheeler finds. And then that person would be able to attend the meetings, but um, and wouldn't be able to vote unless someone dropped off the panel. Um, I think uh, participating in the discussion would be a question whether the alternate could participate. So I think you'll need Mr. Wheeler to figure that out, but it's well, another alternative. Okay. Any more thoughts before I weigh in here? My. Uh, thinking is quite frankly that I'm concerned about the potential for a tie. And so if the fourth member were to attend, it would have to be on the basis that Ms. Jones just 
told us as an alternate, my druthers, my preference would be that we simply have a three-member panel. And to elaborate, particularly prefer to have Ms. Pease participate because it is really her first case that she will be sitting on and will be deciding, uh, although she has been uh, uh, with us for a while. So um, I would, my brothers, that either Mr. Stewart or Mr. Deke agree to. Yeah, if I, if I may jump in then. Uh, um... I have, um, uh, I don't know, if, let's let's make it a statement first. Currently, I am uh, the chair of the, the Stormwater Utility Commission. We are uh, trying to, to tee up that commission to start a work for looking at that very large project. So um, there may be um, several projects are going on, but there may be some conflicts with um, with schedule, which I want to put out there if I'm on the on the board. So if um, if it's OK with everybody else, I would request to be the alternate um, if it is uh, possible, because I think uh, until April or mid April is probably going to be really tough for me to um, to get the appropriate time. Um, so keep that in mind when we schedule it. But obviously I'm a board member, so um, so uh, I will do um, what I need to do. But um, I just want to put that out there. Would you be willing to um, to withdraw from the panel that will consider this case? I, because my brothers would think that we have it straightforward. I don't want to be uh, time on yes, this. I would be willing that to make it three members. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Stewart. Any thoughts about this? Uh, I was going to say the same thing. I could I could act as an alternate or withdraw. Okay. As an option, your option. Okay. Um, just please, any thoughts on the matter? Um, I'm at the. My service is at the pleasure of the rest of the board members. Um, if it is possible for me to observe, I would appreciate the learning opportunity. But whether I'm an alternate or a seated member, um, I leave that to the group. Okay. Um, I would. My preference. That Mr. D simply withdraw withdraw from consideration of this particular case. There are more cases coming up, so it's not if those we don't. Uh, it was pretty hard to hear, but I think you're asking me if I would consider withdrawing, Mr. Chair. Yes, I did. Yes. Uh, yes, I would. I would. Uh, I would uh, like to propose that I would withdraw. I don't know if you make, uh, make a motion for that, but. I would consider that, yes. Thank you. I don't think a motion is necessary. Let me simply state, if there's no further discussion, that the panel to consider COA appeal number 2020-4 will then consist of myself and Chair, uh, Mr. Stewart and Steves. Any further discussion regarding this? So then let us... Uh, um, so the next part of this is that the timing of hearing the appeal. Um, you're, Mr. You're, Wheel, would you give us an idea of the timing of the briefing here? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, by way of introduction, because we have a few people that may not be familiar with my role here, including some people that are listening in, I've been hired to provide legal support to the Board of Adjustment. As such, I'll be available to the board to help with legal questions the board may have, as well as preparing what is commonly referred to as a bench memo, a bench brief for the board to use as it goes through the steps of deliberating and coming to a decision on the case. So as such, um, part of my role here is to give you an idea of what the deadlines are going to look like. Right now, it looks like the appellant's brief is due 15 days after the service of the appeal record. According to the clerk's office, that service occurred on January 13, which makes the appellant brief due the 28th of January. The appellee brief is due 15 days after service of notice by the clerk that the appellant's brief is available for pickup. So there could be a little flex of a few days in there, but tentatively that would be somewhere near mid-February. The appellant has the opportunity to fly to file a reply brief 
and that's 15 days after service of notice that the uh, appellee's brief is available. So again, there could be a few days of flex, but tentatively that would be the end of February. Uh, I've, kinded, I've indicated to the chair that I think I can help with the bench brief and get that prepped within a week of the briefing being concluded. So I would say somewhere in mid-March would be uh, the earliest the board could hold the hearing. All right, I have my trusty calendar here. Um, and I am looking at the week of March 18. Say that, Nate. Say that. Please, would you please take a look at your calendars and see if you are available during that week? Yes. Did you say the week of March 15th? Yes, which is a Monday. Yes. I'm I'm available. Mr. Stewart. I'm available. Um, and I'm available as well. And Mr. Wheeler, you are available at that time. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. I will take a stab at it. I will say um, March 18. That's a Thursday. Does that work for everybody? It does for me. It does for me. Madam Clerk, does it work for you? And I'm looking at Jennifer right now. Yes, Mr. Chair, it works for the clerk's office. Okay, thank you. And Ms. Jones, I don't think you will be participating. So will you or what's the situation with you? Um, Mr. Chair, I'll be there to support Jennifer. She is your person and whatever she needs from me, I will do. Okay, all right, very good. So is that date? Okay for you too, Ms. Jones. All right. I have indicated previously that I prefer morning meetings at this point. We used to meet at five o'clock in the afternoon, but uh, I think a morning meeting works better for the clerks. Um, Mr. Stewart, how about 10 o'clock on? God, why did it disappear? On 18. March 18. 10 o'clock, March 18. That works for me. Ms. Yes, yes, for you as well. 10 a.m. Right. works for me. Okay, Mr. Wheeler. Is that date okay and time okay with you? Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Jones, okay with you? And Ms. Vanna Klassen, okay with you? Yes, Mr. Chair. It would be great to get a little direction um, if this, I understand this would be a longer meeting. Would I block out three hours, two hours? What is your preference? Well, usually we go until it's done, unless we suddenly, you know, hit a time when we are all no longer able to think clearly. Um, I think if we were to schedule it for four hours for the time being, from 10, I think it would be okay. If we have not reached a decision by two o'clock, we will simply have to continue it. Very good, thank you. Is that okay with Mr. Stewart and Ms. Yes. Yes. And with Jennifer Vanaclassen as well? Yes. All right, so the schedule for the hearing of POA appeal number 2020-4 will be on March 18 at 10 p.m. And it will again be a uh, virtual meeting just as today's. And uh, so we can then hopefully will be in a position to consider the case. It is possible that there is a delay and we may have to postpone it, but hopefully that will not be necessary. Any matter, anything further regarding the scheduling of this particular appeal? Mr. Stewart? Uh, just, uh, I don't know if Nancy is aware that uh, usually we will meet the next day to follow up with any particular order. Is, is that okay with her? 
Yes, thank you for letting me know. Thank you, and uh, I should have mentioned that the purpose for that meeting the next day is uh, to approve um, the decision. Um, my concern is that there may not be enough time. This is Mr. Wheeler's first case with us, and um, so it may take a little bit longer for him to prepare final decision. And to simply do it overnight may not be sufficient time. So my brother that rather than scheduling that or thinking about the scheduling it for the night, we schedule it for the following week. And so then the question of course is uh, Ms. Pease, what is your situation on the week during that month? I believe it's likewise quite flexible. I'm just checking my calendar. Um, it's flexible, yes. I have okay, one I have one potential I have one I have one potential meeting on Tuesday the 23rd at 10 a.m. So I'd okay, rather keep Mr. that Stewart. keep that open. I'm I'm open. Okay, and I'm open during that time as well, tentatively. Okay, well thank you for alerting us to that Mr. Stewart. Anything further regarding the scheduling of um BOA appeal number 2020-4? I don't have anything regarding the scheduling, but um, since I'm brand new and coming in um, as a, you know, um, we'll be taking action with you on this case. Um, would it be appropriate and possible for me to read a record of one of the past recent discussions? And if so, is there a particular one I should take a look at? Uh, well, of course you can look at, uh, it's a public record, uh, mm -hmm. so it should be available in either Jennifer or Ms. Jones will make one available to you. I cannot think off the top of my head, I cannot think of one that would be particularly of interest or, or really help you in understanding how we handle these things. Um, Mr. Deek, do you have any suggestion as to Yes, Mr. Chair. Actually, I, I was um, uh, uh, Nancy. This is uh, this is going to be a a, um, a conditional use based uh, project. Um, we had heard one. Um, uh, I think it was the last one actually. And and don't hold against me. I don't know the numbers. I believe it was the that was the last one from 2018, which was a planning based process, but it had similar uh, community concerns regarding the action of the planning board in terms of how they interpreted the code and how they manage the public uh, process and how they then um, address conditions. Um, I think that could be a good one to um, to listen um, uh, to the transcript as well as read the transcript script, uh, perhaps. Um, I know that we did deliberate on it uh, quite extensively and uh, made decision on it, um, which probably will be uh, I'm going to project here, but probably will be the case here too. I think you, you'll have um, some benefit listening to that or reading that. Thank you. So the one the one heard in 2018. Yeah. Okay. It's 2018 dash one. Dash one. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So then the question, Barbara had some. Yeah. So then the question for Barbara is: Is there a transcript of uh, our deliberations? No, no, Mr. Chair, but we can get Nancy information that she can review that prior case. I, I think there's a couple of parts like the minutes would probably be helpful. Um, we can make sure that she can see the briefs. But I think listening to your discussion and debate is going to be remarkable. That's where you do all of the work and we can get her links to the recording. The one thing that I would like to ask as part of this discussion is that Mr. Wheeler weigh in about um, materials outside of what are presented to the board can be reviewed. And I know that at each of your meetings, you do your disclosures about what you have reviewed. And I just wanna make sure that that's um, on the record that you wanna be cautious as a 
quasi-judicial board about what you're reviewing outside of your public meetings. Okay. Dennis? Did you uh, yes, yes, Mr. Chairman, I did. Um, my preference would be that other than the item discussed regarding the 2018 case as a as a matter of training for, for Nancy, uh, if there's anything else that the board or any individual of the board may come across and want to review, I'd ask that you vet that through me first. Um, I would caution from you from, from engaging and looking at things outside the record at this point, um, right? Because it may trigger such things as new evidence. It might, might trigger a conversation about remand, et cetera, or it might um, be um, unfair to one party or the other or to any of the board members if not all persons are notified of what the material is and have some chance to argue about whether it should or should not be included in the record. So, so I would caution against, again, taking things outside the record at this point. Um, how would it be if, uh, uh, if uh, Ms. Pease contacts you and says, hey, would you uh, take a look at what I want to look at <laughs> and, and pass on it before she gets action? Yes, that would be great. That would be great. Mr. Mr. Chair, may I jump in with one one uh, one correction here? I don't know correction, but definitely a a a a, a, a statement which I wanted to make sure that I think uh, uh, Ms. Pease, uh, um make sure that you're looking at the public record of that meeting. That's what I meant to do, you to do, um, which means that you will have uh, plenty of uh, insight in how the process was uh, unfolding and how we made the deliberations and how we made the decisions. The public record includes the briefs, and um, and I think that will be a sufficient uh, for for your experience on the on the uh, planning and zoning and other boards to uh, to get you up to speed. Uh, that's just uh, you know I, I sound like the old wise man here, but that's that's experience. I think it helps. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So, Ms. Peace, what we are suggesting is simply contact Dennis Wheeler and say, hey, this is the case I want to look at. Would you uh, tell me what exactly I can look at. Uh, Listen, uh, to yeah. In other words, work through Dennis's office to uh, uh, to get the material to you. That you want to do. Okay, and that holds for 2018-01, or is that considered to yeah. be uh, approved by dint of this discussion? Oh, and since it's a part, it's public record. To the extent that it's public record, you can take a look at it. The only question is what public record. And what I'm suggesting to you is that you simply contact Dennis and say, "Hey, Dennis, this is what I want to look at. Is this part of the public record?" Okay, thank you, Mr. Stewart. Uh, any, my, any words of wisdom? Uh, yeah, I have. Uh, I want to just. If I could just chime in real quick, my name is Taylor Rounds. I'm an attorney for the developer just listening in and the the conversations about considering things outside of the record give me a little concern. So if, if there is going to be even public records provided to the board, if, if we could be noticed of that, uh, I, I think that's called for. Uh, I'm not sure which case you're talking about. Are you talking about the case that is that we just scheduled? The one that yes. we for consideration? Correct. Oh, well, uh, you will get, you have access to the public record, which is the transcript and the packages, which are being amended as we speak, apparently. Um, but that's the public record. And right. There's just been, there's been discussion about if the board wants to look at other cases or, or other things uh, to vet that uh, through Dennis Wheeler and if that occurs, uh, I think that uh, my client should be entitled to know that. Uh, the, just, just based on the, the regs that say the Board of Adjustment is only supposed to consider the record uh, in the lower body, I just, I just like to know if that occurs. Well, I'm not sure I understand. What, what Ms. Keyes wants to look at is just a previous case to understand the procedure that this board follows. That's all. Uh, it has nothing to do with the substance of the presently pending appeal. Mr. Chairman, this is Dennis yes. uh, Wheeler. My, my intent was should uh, 
should any board member want to look at something that's not currently part of the record, they vet it with me. If I think it's appropriate for them to look at and be part of the record, I will certainly notify the parties so that they have an opportunity to either object or approve the addition of that information to the record. Absolutely. Perfect. And that, that's all I wanted to hear. I appreciate that. Okay. Thank you. Um, this is good. Anything else regarding is P's looking at a previous meeting. Uh, Barrett, if we uh, run across something in the in the record that's been presented so far, and it and it would be something that we would like to have maybe addressed in the uh, brief by uh, our attorney advisor. Is that something you want us to run through you, or is that something that we can go direct to, to uh, Mr. Wheeler on? I would prefer that you run it through. Okay. All right. Anything further regarding the scheduling of appeal, EOA appeal 2020-1? Mr. Chairman, this is Dennis yeah. Wheeler again. I don't have anything in particular on the schedule, but I um, one, I have one comment, and then two, I think Tomas may have had one additional comment. I'm not sure. My comment is, and this is for... Um, Maybe Nancy. Nancy, I can't. I apologize. I can't recall if you've served on other adjudicatory boards or not. Um, but just as a reminder, um, no extra or what we'd call ex parte contact with anybody related to this case or about this case, and that includes phone calls, email, etc. So, if anybody does try to to contact you regarding this case, um, please let me know right away, and, yes, and please don't respond to them. Yes, understood. That's all I had, Mr. Chair. Thank you for that reminder. Mr. Deek, anything further regarding this issue? Yeah, uh, Dennis uh, uh, called me out, so I, I will add one more thing is that uh, that Nancy, you have served long on, uh, on, on PNC and other boards, and I think you are about uh, uh, as well equipped as anyone can be to to do this, so um, so the ex parte communication and all those issues which you're familiar with are um, standard on each of these boards. But um, but again, I, I'm no lawyer, but I think we can follow those rules, and um, and uh, uh, everybody will be there, especially our council to uh, to help you along if you have questions. I would always tell you that on this board we have the luxury to talk to Burnt, and we also have the luxury that if we don't talk to Burnt, he will tell us to talk to Burnt. So it's going to work right. <laughs> Thank you for that encouragement. Yes, I did serve on the Planning and Zoning Commission for a number of years. So. Yes, I know you have, and that's why I'm so anxious to do everything I can to make sure that you can participate here and, uh, and help us out. All right, um, member comments. Um, are there any member comments uh, regarding action that we have taken? Uh, I would like I would like to welcome Nancy on board and uh, I have confidence I've seen some of her work in the past uh, she's well equipped to uh, serve on our board and will be a good addition well thank you Mr. Stewart thank you anything further anything further Any further comments nothing for me sir Nancy? No, thank you. I'm looking forward to serving. Thank you. Mr. Wheeler, anything further? Nothing further. All right. Jennifer, anything further? No, Mr. Chair. Ms. Jones? Nothing. Okay. And I don't have anything further either. Uh, the next item on the agenda is audience participation. Uh, is there anybody in the audience who wishes to program um, at this time? Hearing none, we are about to. It is now almost quarter to eleven. We have been waiting for five minutes. I appreciate your time. And if there is nothing further, uh, this meeting will adjourn. Thank you so much. 
Thank you. Thank you all.